What is up guys, Eric from AndroidSyndicate.com here and we're bringing you another tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple stopwatch app and without further ado let's get right into it. So let's go ahead and start up a new Android Studio project. We'll name it Simple Stopwatch. API 15 is just fine and we'll start with the empty activity and we'll leave it just with main activity. All right, now that everything is all built, let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll go over here to our activity underscore main, and let's get the basics for our stopwatch going. So we're gonna have a text view here. This is going to be for the time being displayed. We're also gonna have three buttons. And that's gonna be for start, stop, and reset. All right, so let's go over here to our XML. We'll open up resources, values, strings. This so we're gonna program the string values. So we'll go string name, and we're gonna create one of these for each of our buttons. So we're gonna say stop button. And simply we're just going to want that to say stop. And we're going to continue to do this for the next two buttons. Okay, so now that we have our three buttons, start, stop, and reset, let's go over here and we'll assign these to each of these buttons here. So we'd simply go up here and we'll make this the start button at string. And then we see here start. And we're just going to do the same thing for these other two right here and here. Perfect, so now that we have the strings assigned, we can go over here and make sure that it works. And sure enough, it does. So now we're gonna wanna make it, we want our buttons to actually do something when we click it. So we're gonna have to add the attribute. Go here in our text view again. We're gonna wanna add Android on click. And what this does is it says when the buttons click, we're simply gonna call this method. So we're gonna have a on start click. And we're gonna do the same thing. We can just go ahead and copy and paste these down here for our other two buttons. All right, so now we've created our three methods. We have on start click, on stop click, and on reset click. So now we need to go over here in our main activity Java and actually go ahead and create these methods public void on start click and it's going to be accepting a view object here and we're going to do the same thing with on stop and on reset click so let me go ahead and do that now all right so now we have our three methods for our three buttons right here so we have reset start and stop and we have the corresponding methods so now we want to actually start creating the stopwatch. So we're going to want to have obviously a time here. So I'm going to go ahead and create this field. We'll make it a private field. So private, we'll just make it an int and we'll call it milliseconds. And that's going to keep track of the time elapsed. We're also going to want to know if it's running or not. So we're going to make a private boolean named running. So to get some logic in here, so when we click the start button, we obviously want it to start. So we're going to set running equal to true. When we reset the button, we're, it's not going to be running. We want it to stop. So running is going to be false. And we're also going to want to reset the time. We're going to set that to zero. And on stop, we don't want to reset the time, but we want it to not be running. So We'll set running to false. All right, so we're making progress here. So now we're going to want to make a method called run timer. And this is going to help us keep track of whether it's running or not. So let's go ahead and create that method now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to get our text field that we have over here. And we're going to want to change that value depending on what time it is. We're going to want to keep incrementing that. So let's go ahead and grab that. And 
and we're gonna of course cast it as a text view and find the view by ID and we didn't change the name so it's just default to text view let's go ahead and do this all right perfect so now we have our text view and we can start doing some things to it so what we're going to want to do is to convert our time into milliseconds and format it into hours, minutes, and seconds. All right, so we're gonna start off by creating an end called hours, and we're gonna get that by taking milliseconds, and we're gonna divide that by a thousand, because a thousand milliseconds in a second, times that by 60, by 60, and then we're actually gonna take the modulus of that and 24, because 24 hours in a day. Next, we're gonna make we're gonna make minutes, and then we're gonna make seconds after that. So for the minutes, in a similar fashion, we're gonna take milliseconds, and we're gonna divide that by the quantity of a thousand times sixty and because a thousand milliseconds and then we're going to take the modulus of 60 because 60 minutes in an hour next moving on to seconds likewise we're going to do milliseconds divided by a thousand and we're going to do modulus 60 again and because 60 seconds in a minute and finally milliseconds where we're going to do milliseconds. Actually, we're going to want to change this one. We'll just name it milli. We'll do milliseconds, modulus 100. So now we have a way to format our milliseconds into hours, minutes, and seconds. Then we're going to want to change that into a string. We'll call that time. And we'll use the string format. And we're going to do it like this. If you recall, we could do D. We'll do 02D so that way there's two spaces. And we're going to do that four times, one for each. Okay. And then afterwards, the Ds, if you don't remember from formatting, the Ds represent the values. So you have it first, and then you're going to have the values you want inserted. So we're going to have hours, minutes, seconds, and milli. And make sure to do milli because that's the formatted version. Great. And now we're going to want to set that. So we have our text view, and we're going to do set text, and to our time we just formatted. All right, so we're making progress here. But now you might be asking, well, how do we keep the time increasing. So we're going to say that if it's running, we're going to increase the milliseconds. There we go. Just had to refactor that quickly. I spelled it wrong. All right. So now we got a good foundation here. But now we're going to have to make it so it continually runs. And normally in Android, you do that through a thread. However, we can't because Android already has a thread, and if we try to use that, we'll get a called from wrong thread exception. So we're going to have to use something called a handler, which we'll go into detail now. So to go into a little bit about what a handler does is it allows you to schedule code that should be run at some point in the future. You can also use it to post code that needs to be run in a different thread. In our case, we're going to want our thread to run every millisecond. So to use a handler, we're going to have to use a runnable object and then use the handler post and post delayed methods to specify when we want the code to run. So let's go into that a little bit now. So to start things off, we're going to make a new handler. We'll just name it handler. It's new handler. All right, so we have our new handler object here. And what we're gonna use is the handler post method. 
And that basically says, hey, we're going to want to execute this code here as fast as we possibly can. So what we insert inside of it as a parameter is we actually create a new runnable. And runnable just says that, hey, we're going to want to run this code that's inside this method here. So to get started, we're going to override. And then we're going to create a new method called public void run. And it looks kind of strange because we have a method inside this parameter here. So it's going to end with the semicolon and colon here, or excuse me, semicolon here. So now what we're going to do is use this here, all this stuff we just created, and we're going to want to have that run inside our handler here. So inside our new run method, we're going to put all this data here. And at the very end, we're going to say handler dot post delayed. And what this does is it says, hey, we're going to run this method at some point in the future. And it takes two parameters. We're going to say what runnable to use. And in case we want, we want this runnable in our case. And it's going to ask you for a time in milliseconds for it to run. And for us, we want this to run every single millisecond. Okay, now that we have our post delayed in here, we're going to want to make sure that we have the rest of our code inside the run method. That way it'll keep running all of this. We don't want it outside. So this is saying, okay, we want to call this runnable every one millisecond. So now we have all that created. We want this method to start running as soon as we start up the app. So we're going to add a little run timer in here. And let's go ahead and test it out and see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and test our app here. Let's hit start. And it uh, looks like it's actually not working. So let me stop this. Let's go over here. And why isn't this working? Let's see here. Let's try this. There we go. So as you can see, our stopwatch is functioning as intended. Let's try stopping it, and it stops. Starting it, perfect. Reset, goes back to zero. But let me show you something. Let's start it. Let's go over here, and if we rotate the device, ooh, you can see that it goes back and it stops. Now, the reason for this is because when the device is rotated, Android thinks that it's a change in the screen configuration. So it actually destroys your activity and then recreates it. So we are losing our data here, which is the milliseconds and the Boolean of running. So we're going to explore that a little bit and try to fix it. So when we do rotate the device, it won't do that. So how we can actually counteract this is when Android goes to delete an activity, which is what happens when you rotate the device, it has this save instance state method, which you might have noticed here where it says bundled save instance state on the on create. So we can actually utilize this idea of a bundle to save some of the data that we want. So how we can counteract this is by using the on save instance state method. And like I said, it takes in a bundle. And we can use some of the methods that a bundle has available. And we can store some of the data that we want to retrieve when the activity is recreated. And this is done by put using the put and then star. And usually what the star means is that it's going to save a certain type of data. So if we use a save instance state dot put string or put boolean, so we can store different types. In our case, we want put boolean, and we're going to store running is the title we're going to give it, and then we want to pass it the value of running. And we'll do the same thing for milliseconds. 
put int and we're going to store milliseconds as the name and then we're going to milliseconds for the value. So milliseconds is just how we retrieve it. So now when an activity is destroyed, before it is, it'll call this method and we'll be able to save these values. So now we're going to want to retrieve these values when we create it. So we're going to say if and if the saved instance state is not equal to null, meaning that there is something saved in there, we're going to use this bundle that we just got from here, the saved instance state, and we're going to retrieve some of that information. So we're going to say running equals save instance state dot get boolean. And we're going to pass in the value that we want to retrieve, which will be running. And we're also going to want to do the same thing for our milliseconds. We're also going to move the run timer down here. So we want to check first to see if there's anything before we start running the timer. So let's go ahead and deploy our app again and see what happens. Okay, we're back here. It's working as usual. Let's try rotating the device and see what happens. And as you can see, it continues running. So that's one of the common bugs that you'll experience when you're creating some apps is when you rotate the device you'll lose some data. But hopefully this explains a little bit about how we can counteract that and how to pass some data along through these bundles. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm going to be bringing you a lot of Android content. As always, this was Eric Schaefer signing off.